Now let's do one of these two. Longest common prefix for a list of strings or first unique character. I'm gonna do the longest common prefix. And uh, what, what is that? Well, that's basically saying string array inputs equals, let's create some strings. Uh, string one, extrapolation or whatever. I don't even know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I, I just want str to be the, the longest. I just want that to be our solution. So I'm just doing strength, try, whatever. That's enough. Uh, we're trying to figure out for a list of strings or for, a, for an array of strings, what is the longest common prefix for all of them? So here it's obvious that it's going to be str. You know, you can, you of course need to create a example for, we will create some more examples just to test whether it works. But for now, I just want to use this one. So I'm going to create a method. What does that method return? It returns a string. So I'm going to say string result equals get longest common prefix. And I'm going to pass in inputs. And this is all red. Alt enter, create method, done, done so. Uh, basically, we're creating a method. You pass in a bunch of strings, and it returns a string that's going to be the, the longest common, uh, the longest common uh, prefix of all of those. So I'm going to say return result. Whoopsie. Create local variable. We're going to start with an empty string, and this is one of the things where we could use a string builder. Uh, because there's many ways that you can do this task. You can do it with uh, index of uh, substring, whatever. There's probably many ways to do it, but I would assume now the easiest for me is just going through one of these strings. Doesn't even matter which one, because when one ends, there's certainly not going to be, I mean, we can even go through the shortest one because it cannot, the, the longest common prefix cannot, cannot be longer than the shortest one. We can also go through the first one and stop whenever we encounter any one that, that's no longer, you know. Uh, for example, my idea is to go one character at a time through each of these. And then when the characters start differing, as long as they're the same, we continue. Or we continue as long as the character is the same and none of the strings has reached uh, the end, right? Those are the two uh, reasons why we would wanna keep on going. As once we, for example, here in our example, we go S, 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 fine. Go to T, it's T, 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 R, 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 R. And then we, when we get to I, as soon as we hit this A, we want to break out of the loop and say STR is the result, right? So let's try to write that. And let's use a string builder because we're going to be adding one letter at a time, just for show uh, with the string builder. And, uh, and again, just to be a tiny little bit more optimized by because we're not uh, adding to a string, we're adding to a string builder, you know, new string builder. And this creates an empty string builder. And at the end, we're just going to say uh, return string builder to string, right? Okay. So now, what did we say we wanted to do? Uh, for I, uh, inputs of, inputs of, zero dot length we can go through the first word again let me just say if uh, inputs dot size length whatever if inputs dot size by the way another thing it's not always called length in 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 php php array size uh it's called something oh my count or size of yeah it's called count you know this is this is again something you don't ever have to remember things by heart you just you know, Google real quick. Inputs dot length. If inputs dot length is equal to zero, well, we can just return an empty string. Then there is no no inputs at all. So we're. I just want to cover that just so this doesn't crash when it's uh, an empty array. Uh, so now we go through the first string, whichever it whichever it is, and we take the first character. And we also need to go loop through all the strings, right? So let's do that. Mm, let's say char. C or letter, even better, is inputs inputs of zero. So the first strings char at I. So give me the first strings first letter or whichever letter we are at. And now go through all the other strings. 
that's inputs dot length and we don't have to start at zero because we already took the first letter of the first string we can we can go from one and now what are we doing here well if inputs of j meaning like the one of the next strings uh dot length is less than i what does this mean we're going a letter at a time i is going through letters so if at any point we encounter uh, a string who's shorter i mean there can be an empty string here and immediately uh we can get out you know uh so we will see if we need to use uh, less than or equal or just less than we'll see that uh, later who i mean we can probably think about it now but why bother when we can run the program as many times as we want uh so if the some word that we're currently examining is not long enough or the letter uh, at that point uh, is uh, not proper. So if the letter is different than the one that we currently are comparing with, so if inputs dot of j dot char at i, you you just have to follow the indexes. You know here uh, j is going to be our word. I could have even uh, created a variable that's called word. You know, let me show do that string word now it's much easier you know we take the next word and we say if the word's length is less than i meaning there's no i is going to be our letter letter uh, then the index of a letter that we're comparing to so it starts off at zero and it will go up to the length of the first word or stop when we encounter a shorter word so or even stop when uh, we when that letter is not the same so if that letter is not the same as letter meaning from the first word we're gonna stop we can literally say break right and uh, that's it but if we if that's not the case we move on and after this whole loop if it has gone through the whole loop and never found a different letter that means that letter can be added to the result so string builder dot append letter right so this inner loop goes through all the words comparing their letter let's say first letter for example comparing their first letter to the first letter of the first word if they're all the same it'll just never break out of this you know this break only breaks out of this loop it still it still doesn't break out of this loop this loop will still uh you know iterate over and over so if we have come to this part. Uh, no, no, no. This is not really proper. What I've just wrote, uh, this will not work. We need to uh, only add the letter if we got through all the words. Hmm. So let's create a, an additional variable. Um, yeah, let's call it Boolean. Uh, I don't know. Uh, some letter broke the rule, so broke rule equals false. I'll, I mean, there can probably be a better name, but this is just the first thing that, that I came up with. So we are saying, okay, is there any word that broke the rule? As soon as we find that word, we can say broke rule equals true, and we can immediately break out, right? Hmm, not really, because it didn't break the rule if the length is less than i it could have yeah I'm, I'm 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 gonna leave it like this on purpose and then i'm gonna find an example that doesn't work and then we're gonna fix it. that's the best way to do it so if something broke the rule it's gonna be true so we here need to say if not broke rule if nothing broke the rule then append that letter if something broke the rule do not append that letter and uh uh yeah uh if not broke rule add the letter otherwise if it did break the rule we can break out of the uh, we can break out of the loop immediately because there is no more need to go further if we come to the, to this letter and it broke i mean this letter broke the rule it's not not the same as i there's no need to check for further right so we can break out of the outer loop as well you understand this okay so now let's try to see what i mean this should be it let's just run it 
get the longest prefix and let's s out the result and let's examine what we get. I think this is it. Okay, get rid of this. Okay, the result is str. Uh, now, yeah, let's try to break it somehow. Let's do sat. Let's see if it works now. Now the longest prefix is s, but now let's do str here. It again worked. What is what about st? Okay, so now it messed up. Why did it mess up? Let's see first where it messed up. It messed up here. We were trying to get a letter that doesn't exist. Yeah, this is exactly what I was talking about. Uh, we need to go up to i. I think we need to go up to equals because what are we doing here? The length of this is two, and we're trying to, we're only breaking out when word dot length uh, is less than i. I mean, uh, we're it needs to be when i is two. That means we're trying to catch the third letter, right? So when it's e also equal to i, that that's when it needs to to stop, you know, as well, right? Okay, so it's now st. Now let's test out with this S. Let's test out with an empty string. Nothing. Okay, that's cool. Uh, so now let's try to break it some other way. I don't know how to break it, to be honest. Uh, do you have any idea what, what we could input to make it fail by looking at the code? Is there any example of what we could do to break this thing? Huh. Yeah, null might work. Null. Yep. So what do we need to do? How do we fix that? Well, when we're trying to see, um, uh, when we get the word, we can literally say if word equals equals null, break something like that or we can even contract this with the with another uh we can add this here word equals equals null or whoops or so now if this is fulfilled it immediately doesn't even go to this part uh, when you call something on null it crashed because you tried to call length on nothing right word was nothing it was null so it doesn't know how to do that but now it will not even reach this portion of the code because if null is true, if word is null, true or anything will always be true. What I'm saying is if this part is true, it doesn't even have to evaluate the rest of the expression because it's just or this or that. This is already fulfilled, so it doesn't need to evaluate further, right? So if the word is null, we just say it broke the rule, we break out and you know it will just work again. And thank you, Arthur, for noticing. Yeah, that's that's very important. It's always important to make sure your program works with empty stuff, with nulls and so on. So let's do another one, inputs two. And now let's create an empty array. Try that. It still works because we already covered that here. Uh, I'm not sure like what else can we do to break it, but let's just do a bunch of the same strings. Uh, yeah, it works if we add something to some of them. Or what if this one is short, the shortest? We never tried to have the first one the shortest because we are doing something special with the first one. It still works, yeah. OK, so do you guys understand this uh, code and the, the idea that was behind it? Do you have any questions rather for the get longest common prefix?